Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, on today's gardening agenda, I need to get my ranunculus planted out. I also want to seed some dahlias, seed mahogany splendor hibiscus, and also I'm trying a new vine this year. It's a white bitter melon, and I'm wondering if any of you guys have grown it and how vigorous the vine is and how strong of a support it needs. So if you've grown that, can you please tell me how strong your support was and what kind of support you used? But first things first, let's get these ranunculus corms in the ground. They should have gotten in the ground about two days ago, but we had a winter storm that kind of just put everything on hold. It's super bright, so I hope you can see out here, but I'll pull one out for you. That's what they look like. This one looks good. This is a little bit longer and lankier than I would like to see, but I was just trying to hold them in the dark basement while we waited for this cold weather to pass. But let's go ahead and get them in this raised bed here. And look at this. This is really exciting. Are you able to see all those tulips popping up? Signs of spring everywhere, even though they're covered in snow. So I'm gonna put these in at about nine by nine spacing and I bury them about two inches down. All right, guys, I got them all in and I actually have about 25 left over. So I think I'll put those in my grandma's garden, but let me show you these and talk about the system I'm gonna do to cover them this evening. So hopefully you can see here with the sun, but they're at approximately nine by nine inch spacing. I find that's as close as I can go here in a really wet and humid environment. So the hoops I'm using here are just from Roar Seed Company. That's a local seed company to me. They charge, I think, 99 cents for these hoops. They're just really lightweight, small metal hoops. But you can just even get metal from the hardware store and bend it yourself. You can usually bend it by hand or push it against a tree and bend it that way. This bed is eight feet long. And for an eight foot long bed, I like to do three hoops. And then I'll put some Agrabon on it tonight. Now it is gonna be 36 tonight, but because this is their very first night out here, I do wanna give them a little more warmth and protection just the first few nights. So I think I'll just scatter these around a bit over here in my grandma's garden. I do have some Rubra Maxima fritillaria over here, and I can't exactly remember where it's planted, but I think I'll just dig with my hands in case I hit anything, and we'll see what happens. I did do ranunculus in my hydrangea border last year without any protection, without any extra compost, without any fish emulsion fertilizer, which I will use on those ranunculus. As a garden plant, I thought they performed just fine. They still flowered, but they definitely were not as vigorous. They definitely came down with uh, black bean aphids sooner than my raised beds. So something to think about. But let's just try some over here and we'll see what happens. And I'm not gonna give these any protection. I'm not gonna give them any fertilizer, any compost. And then we can really make a comparison because I think last year, um, if you would have watched a tour, you probably would have seen those ranunculus in the hydrangea bed, but I didn't really concentrate on them because they did get black bean aphids eventually. So I got all those in the ground. So why don't we go ahead now and seed some dahlias, mahogany splendor hibiscus, and that really cool bitter melon vine that I'm hoping to grow. Here's how the bachelor's buttons are looking after the snowstorm. And here's a quick look at that foxglove after the 19 degree snowstorm. I'll get a close up for you. So you can see they really are tough and that layer of snow actually served as really great protection for these. And look at this guys, there's just tulips, daffodils, allium, fritillaria popping up everywhere. Hey Grace, you wanna plant some dahlias? Wanna do dahlias from seed? Yeah, okay, let's do it. So why don't we start with these dahlias from Triple Wren Farm. My girlfriend sent me these in the mail and I'm really excited to try them out. The dahlias that I grew from seed last year came from Botanical Interests and they were really awesome. I found the wildlife really loving them. Lots of butterflies and hummingbirds visited them and I'm excited to give this mix a try. 
So I noticed that um, Triple Run Farms doesn't have on the packaging how deep to plant them. So I'm just going to go double the depth of these seeds, which is about a half of an inch. And the great thing about growing dahlias from seed is that it's super easy. Also, it's super economical because a packet of seeds will cost you just a few dollars. And then you can really see, do you like growing dahlias? Maybe you come upon a variety that's really special and you wanna keep the tubers. But what's really nice is if you don't wanna to have to worry about digging the tubers, you don't feel so bad because you just didn't make that huge investment up front by buying tubers. All right, so next up, let's try this bitter melon. And I'm looking for any and all advice on growing bitter melon because I've never grown one before. I'm not really understanding exactly what it tastes like. Everyone just says bitter. And I've asked some people, would they mind comparing it to something else they've eaten? And no one seems to have a comparison. So I'm just really interested to try to grow these and see what they really taste like. And it looks like we didn't get too many seeds in this packet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If one comes up, I'll be a happy lady. And last also some of these mahogany splendor hibiscus seeds. The first time I ever grew these was when I was managing the farm over at Plain and Fancy, which was a vegetable farm but it was fall time and there wasn't too much more in the garden to look at. All the zinnias had got powdery mildew and I had to pull them out. The corn had been harvested and all the squashes were of course getting annihilated by a squash bug. So I was looking for some ornamental things to add into the fall garden over there at work. And my girlfriend happened to have some of these in her nursery and told me they're super easy to grow from seed. So I gave them a try and I was just hooked after that because not only are these great cut foliage plants, but also they're just a fun plant to have in the landscape in place of a shrub. Definitely worth the money. I forget what the seed packet cost me, maybe $5. So 25 seeds for $5 and you're basically getting 25 shrubs at the end of the day. I think that's really worth it. Just put a humidity dome on them. Well guys, it's actually evening now and I'm getting ready to cover my bed of ranunculus. So let's go back there and do that together before we wrap up today's video. It's about 6.30, the sun's about to go down and this is when I normally put up any row covers that need to go on my beds. You can see that I've had the planting area exposed to the sun and the wind and any elements during the daytime, but just since they're starting to get established, I'm going to give them some protection tonight. The grade of Agrabond that I'm using is AG50, that's frost protection down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit, or essentially it raises the planting area temperature by six to eight degrees Fahrenheit. And that will be perfect for tonight it's only going down to 36 but even if it was going down to 30 or 26 or even 24 these plants would still be fine under AG 50 so let's get it on so you can see this is the way I have it during the day I just have a rock here so that I don't have to take the whole thing off and then all I have to do is just pull it over my hoops I just use landscape staples to hold everything down You could also use rocks if you didn't have landscape staples. But that's all there is to it. The ranunculus are tucked in for the night and I'll open up the planting area back in the morning, probably about eight or nine o'clock once the sun comes up. But guys, I wanna wish you a great day. I'll see you sometime soon for lots and lots of planting or some kind of a cool flowers tour once I get all them planted. But I really hope you have a great day. Bye.